Hello everyone, my name is Jeffrey G97 and welcome to the video. Uh, we're taking a break from Tokyo uh, just for today. If you guys checked out my community list this morning, um, I'll be doing the one hour endurance challenge at Lake Majari using the BMW M6 GT3. Uh, the last time I did this challenge was about nine months ago, so it's probably a good time for update version of this challenge. Um, that was back in update 1.21. Um, so there's been quite a lot of challenges uh, since the last time we did this challenge. Uh, so find the cars at Brand Central. You're going to click on Germany. Uh, you're going to click on the BMW logo. And you could choose either of these two right here. You can choose the blue PlayStation sponsored M6. Or you can do the white with the blue and red uh, livery uh, M6 Spirit or Sprint model. Um, I don't know why one has more points than the other. They both have the same exact stats. So it's kind of strange that one car actually has a little bit more points than the other. Uh, the cost is less than 500,000 credits. So it's not awfully too expensive. Just win Tokyo or just win Le Mans and you'll easily get the car. Uh, this challenge is at the Human, the human Comedy where all the races are an hour long. Uh, it's basically a hard or medium pit strategy. Uh, racing hard so it's one stop while the mediums are two. Um, I'll be the, using the racing mediums twice uh, pit stop strategy. Um, so I'm going to show you guys see some clips, gameplay, and laps to pit. Uh, so here we are our first lap uh, with this car. I'm using my wheel for this event and the car feels very smooth and feels very nice. Uh, we'll be racing view map 1 for the whole race uh, with this car. Uh, the car has really good uh, sight line speed. Uh, that's why I chose it. Um, I chose this car. Um, won it my first go around with this car. Also the second go around. Uh, the third go around when I did this challenge, I did the Subaru. Which was all the way back in update 1.21. Um, I did try the Subaru for this challenge before this one before doing the BMW again, um, but the car just felt for me, it just wasn't as strong as it was back back it was nine months ago. So I went back to the roots uh, and did the BMW. Um, as you'll see pretty soon, uh, we got the nice slipstream from the Corvette right here, and we're gonna make a move right here, over breaking the Corvette. And we'll be taking P9 uh, from the Corvette as we follow behind the Ford GT. So the car feels very smooth like I said before. Uh, as you can see it through that corner we went full throttle. Uh, this is basically just getting used to the car and just having a good rhythm. Uh, that's basically the key just being consistent for each lap uh, and for each turn. When to, get, when to get back on the throttle. How much brake to input the turn. When to left brake. You know. The very simple things um, that you have to pretty much do pretty repeat uh, from lap after lap and not really losing a uh, beat. As we're going to make a move on the Audi as we avoid the Audi just barely. Making it up to P7. So we're going to fast forward now to lap 8. This is actually a pretty good battle between us and Mercedes AMG. Uh, we're going to make a move beside the Mercedes. So we have side by side going down the hill. I'm going to do the smart thing and break off just a little bit early. I could have probably went a little bit more aggressive but the Mercedes ran off a little bit off well. We got a little too great with the throttle and kind of put ourselves in the bad spot too. Uh, went off the track. Thankfully we saved it. Um, lost some time but I would rather do that than just getting too great with the throttle and just being out the car. So that was a pretty close call for us right there. Um, so we're falling back to third. Uh, we're going to try to remake the move. Uh, but before that, uh, you'll see pretty soon the leader of the Toyota is in the pits. So we're going to follow the Mercedes driver as well. So we have all three of us main leaders are in the pits. Uh, you can see that the M other M6 driver stayed out. Uh, he's going to stay out for another two laps uh, in this race. 
for this pit strategy. Now for this strategy is not only we're going to change tires, but calculating the laps we ran, we did eight laps. So to do a pretty risky undercut, I chose not to fill the car all the way up. So the strategy, this is how it played out. So here we are, we're in P13. You can tap on the screen, we're just in front of Toyota. So here we are. And here's what used to be the leader. So just by doing filling up the car just a little bit after close to nine laps really is effective, but we'll have to pay for it in our second pit stop. And I'll explain why later. So the only advantage uh, you'd have by doing this is since you don't have as much fuel as the other rest of the field that change tires. Uh, the car will feel a little bit lighter, it'll feel a little bit quicker through the corners and through the straights. As you'll see here, uh, just how much more grip we have compared to the other two cars in front of us. I mean, it's a whole different ball game. Um, tires does really matter in this race as well. As you can see, we're just catching up to the Alexis and to the Aston Martin. Matter of fact, we're going to try to go f uh, for a little bout right here. Um, with the Alexis being able to shove the Aston Martin out of the way, we found ourselves in the bad spot. Uh, we took up some damage. Now, thankfully, the damage model for this race is set to light. So, if you do pick up damage, it'll only last for a couple seconds, uh, which is a little bit annoying. But it is a lot better than it being set to heavy. If it was set to heavy, uh, you'll have to manually drive to the pits yourself and fix the damage. Uh, but this is very similar to what if you drove Tokyo Expressway, if you hit the wall, or if you hit an AI car pretty hard. Uh, it's the same damage model. Um, as you see, the damage basically is now repaired, and we can get back on our way. A uh, little bit annoying, but you'll have that happen from time to time. Alright, we're going to fast forward now to lap 16. Uh, we're going to stay out for just one more lap. Uh, now, if we did choose to pit again uh, with the Toyota, as you can see, it's right now behind us. Um, and they're about to make their pit, uh, pit stop. We're going to try to see um, how much time we'll lose compared to the Toyota. Because once the Toyota comes out of the track, It'll have fresh tires, and it'll have that one lap extra just to chase us down with us driving one extra lap. Um, at this point of the race, the car did feel pretty good. Uh, as you can see that uh, on lap 14, able to do a pretty quick lap around the 157s. And so really a pretty quick car to use, like I said. It felt really smooth, really strong. Um, and you can tell right behind us we have the Mercedes driver behind us as well. Um, the other M6 driver is going to pit like around lap 19, 20. Uh, so the M6 is a little bit slighter strategy compared to uh, the main leaders, including ourselves as well. Um, but it's just mainly just uh, once you get to the lead, tries to get you up a pretty big margin. Uh, being very consistent lap after lap of all the turns. Um, try not to make mistakes, minimize mistakes if you can. It's also another crucial thing around this challenge as well. Um, as you can tell that even with the worn tires we are pretty much losing a pretty good bit of time um, as we're over a second slower this lap compared to our fastest lap of the race. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and run the last corner. We're going to misjudge this last turn. We're just going to ride the grass just for a little bit. Uh, thankfully didn't lose control of the car at that point. Um, so we're going to go inside the pits. Of course we'll be changing for our, our mediums for the last time for the race. Uh, but unfortunately uh, the time left for the race uh, we have to fill up the car all the way up on fuel. So just by doing this It'll make it feel like it's basically eternity. As you can see, there's a, the fuel itself is kind of slow uh, to fill up. There's the Mercedes driver. Uh, they're coming in for our last pit stop. Uh, as you can see, we got a new leader, the Renault. 
and the M6 is running for this as well. So, but like I said, the uh, M6 driver, uh, they pitted again on lap, I believe it was 19 or 20. Um, but here we are, we got our pit stop finished finally, to flip the car. And compared to us, the Toyota driver, uh, there's the Toyota driver right there. So that's how much time the Toyota driver was able to make up uh, from us, making up one little extra lap. Uh, staying outside the track. Now the good thing is for us is we have one lap extra uh, fresher tires compared to the tail driver. And I'll show you guys coming up this corner uh, that we actually be able to drive away from the tail driver. Uh, so at this point once you get fresh tires the car will feel a lot better as we get a little squirrely right there. Um, but if you guys like I said back my last video, which was nine months ago, if you guys aces turn right here, uh, simply saying fourth gear, and just make sure the tires stay close to the curbs, maybe a little bit over them, but not too much, or else you get a penalty. Uh, then you can basically uh, gain a lot of time on the AI and basically get away from them. As you can see, we just basically pulled off from the Toyota driver. So here we are now on lap 26 out of lap 30. Uh, we're catching now the Renault driver. The M6 driver did was able to make the last pit stop. Uh, so right now we're catching the Renault driver, uh, which is on the hard tire strategy, making only one stop. Uh, the neat thing here is we have this Jaguar F-Type, which is going to slow down the leader. So we'll be able to make a double overtake and basically pass the Renault driver, not only for the lead, but that's also for the win as well. So overall review with this car as we're in the last lap, uh, you can tell there are two front tires. They're basically are cooked. Uh, we're doing now two minute laps, which is pretty slow for this car, like very slow. Um, but that's the way it, it worked out, uh, just by putting on lap eight and then laps uh, seventeen. Um, if I would have known the tires were going to be in this bad shape, I probably would have pitted lap 9, the first car round. And then probably lap 19 on the, on the second pit stop, or lap 18. Um, so, just to let you guys know how the car felt. It didn't feel loose, it just felt pretty draggy and felt a little bit uncomfortable. A little tight, uh, understeer. Um, but that was the strategy I had to stick with. Um, so the other M6 driver, as you can see, he's the second spot in the race. Uh, so BMW seems to be a good car to choose that and the uh, Supra as well. Fully recommend doing those. Now this would have been like update like 1.15 or 16 when this came out. Uh, we would have had the Supra um, as well. Well, you don't really see the Subaru up here in the field. Um, I used to do the Subaru, or I did use the Subaru in my third run, picking like update 1.21. But like I said, it felt underpowered and just didn't feel as quick uh, as it used to be. So we're going to finish the race with both front tires completely gone. Uh, we're going to finish the lap in just 30 laps. So, like I said, the car. Overall, did very well. Was very smooth, um, even though the the tires were basically dead uh, the, on that last little bit. So here's the finishing results. Like I said, the M6s came in first and second spot. So I highly recommend doing those cars. So is that Supra. Those are probably going to be your your two best cars to choose from. But again, hope this video has been a big help to you. Hopefully, this strategy race review will help you out in that majority race. It's a little tricky. So hopefully this will help out. If you guys want to check out my last video I did at Tokyo Expressway using the Toyota MR2 with the Audi R8 engine swap, you can click on right there. And if you guys are enjoying what you saw, why not subscribe, turn on the bell for notifications to be notified. Hope you guys have a good rest of the day, and I'll see you guys later. Take care.